Okay, well, first off, we're a company that focuses on intelligent distributed energy storage technology. And by intelligent, we mean the ability to manage it in real time. So as a utility, they can treat it as a single asset, and it's distributed storage technology. So let me uh, take you over here and show you what we're talking about. Obviously during the day when it's hot is when the system reaches its peak demand. So what we've done is to build a technology that takes advantage of the temperature differences between day and night in order to find a way of shifting that energy and relieving the pressure on the grid. What we do is we actually will make ice. This is a distributed storage device. We call it the Ice Bear and it holds 450 gallons of water. And So at night we will charge or make ice and uh, it'll take anywhere from eight to ten hours uh, and we do that when it is off peak so the system can produce the energy when it's cleaner cheaper and more efficient during the daytime what we do is we'll come over and we'll connect into an HVAC unit and that HVAC unit Really, what we're doing here is we have a control system and we run a refrigerant line from right here out into the HVAC, so we drop a coil inside that system, and it's a closed loop refrigerant. So, otherwise, what would normally happen is a compressor, as it gets hot, has to work very, very hard. Uh, in fact, the higher, the hotter it gets, the harder that compressor has to work. What we're able to do is we take a closed loop refrigerant and we reject that heat back into the block of ice, melting that ice. So we guarantee we can turn off that compressor for a minimum of six hours, typically six to twelve, six to ten hours, uh, and we guarantee the delivery of a minimum thirty ton hours of cooling. In fact, because it's the refrigerant into the ice, it also means that um, it doesn't make a difference what the outdoor temperature is. Meaning, the higher it gets, actually, the higher the value that the system provides. So this application is really good during the day because that's typically when folks are going to be using most of their energy anyway. And so this actually not only really help with peak demand but also saves some KWH. Well, yeah. Now we're very careful. This is an energy storage, which is about shifting energy from one time period to the next. But what we find is when we're out in the field and we're dropping and placing these coils into existing systems, we actually do see some energy savings as well. So the way in which our business works, though, is that we're providing capacity contracts to utilities. And then in turn, we go out and we identify utility owns the asset. And so they deploy these assets uh, in their system at no cost to their customers. In turn, the customer gets the benefit of reduced demand, some bill savings, and the utility has a system of distributed storage technology that they can manage as a single resource. So the, the utility is going to go to what type of customer? So when you look at packaged units, you're talking about typical commercial buildings, light industrial. Anything, it could be a bank, a retail store, a restaurant, or a small office buildings, or a strip mall complex, generally two stories or less. And is the system going to be at the location? Oh yeah. We put it right on top of the roof or we can put it next to the building and then the run, run the refrigerant line up on top. So what type of maintenance does something like this have? Something like this doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance. Fortunately, about once a year we come by and we'll put a little biocide inside the water to make sure it can be used. But it's a closed loop system and there's very little losses. So other than an annual visual inspection, this system will run, in fact, our contracts are for 25 years. Yeah. And is the, is the, are the utilities wanting to buy these systems in certain parts of the country? Are there other, are there other No, areas? believe it or not, you find that the problem of peak energy demand is uh, almost everywhere you look. Even in places like the Northwest, where there's winter peaking, the problem, however, is being able to meet their summer peak even though it's lower. So we find we have projects that are either in pilot phases or have been uh, fully deployed in places like Canada. Uh, in Toronto, we're working with Ontario Hydro, or in places like Las Vegas or Southern California. It actually can work in many, many places. What's more, that cold coil also provides a real great benefit for dehumidification. So how does this affect the water bill because you're using ice? It doesn't. We fill it one time with 450 gallons of water and it stays inside. So you don't have to refill it all the time. It doesn't use water in that sense. It's just every day the water is frozen, it's melted, then it's refrozen again. 
That is pretty cool. Yeah, over and over. How, so how long it's you pretty guys, sustainable. How long have you guys been in business? The company was founded in 2003, but the original technology was uh, dates back to sometime in the 70s when the DOE originally funded some research into the challenges about how do you make and then melt ice at a steady state in order to provide constant cooling capability. So, Very cool. Yeah. And what are, what are some of the growth plans for the business? Well, I think uh, they're probably pretty self-evident. You know, we're working with a number of utilities right now uh, who are looking at what are cost-effective storage technology options, uh, looking at programs. We have projects, as I said, in all parts of the United States. In fact, so far we have over 5 million hours of operated, operations data in the field. Wow. So, yeah. Where are most of the systems located right They're now? They're evenly spread out, although probably a heavier concentration in California, which tends to be one of the states that leads interest in uh, storage technologies. And talk to me a little bit about why you're so interested in the company, why you've joined the company, and why sure. you're doing what you're doing. Well, okay, so I first came across ICE when I was serving as the chairman of the Energy Commission and had an uh, opportunity to look at the evaluation. That was about six years ago. Uh, and it knew, I knew then that it made sense if it would work. I happened by coincidence to run into Frank Ramirez, the CEO, uh, at an event when I was traveling in Colorado and we got to talking and I had remembered uh, how much and uh, we had a conversation and I'm convinced that yes, storage is where it's at. Uh, it's a great opportunity to sort of define what the rules and the benefits are. Uh, it's sustainable, uh, it's exciting, it is smart grid ready, so uh, when you look at all those things, I was certainly drawn to that. Well Joe, thanks so much for being with us. Sure. I really appreciate it. What you My pleasure. Great, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.